Well, when 81-year-old St Basil's resident Maria Vasilakis tested positive to COVID-19, she was taken to hospital immediately. But when Maria remained asymptomatic, doctors made the decision to send her back to the nursing home where they assumed she would be safe. Less than a week later, Maria was back in hospital where she died from the virus. It's a death her son Spiro Vasilakis believes could have been avoided. Spiro joins us now. Thank you so much for your time. We're so sorry uh, for your loss. How are you holding up? Uh, well, as, as good as um, one can under the circumstances. Awful, mate. Awful time for you yeah. and the family. Um, there was less than a week between the day your mother, Maria, tested positive to COVID and the day she died in hospital. Talk us through the mistakes that could have been so easily avoided here. Well, I think the, the very first mistake um, happens that the centre itself, um, since March, had um, restrictions on how family could visit um, their loved ones in there. But, um, you know, the question is, what did they do for the staff? Because in the end, it was staff that brought it in. Um, you know, they should have been treated the same as um, family coming in and out um, of the, of the um, premises. Um, they get their first um, positive on the 9th, but no PPE gear is mandated until the 13th, four days later. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't seem to be right that, um, you know, you, you've, got an, uh, you've got one person testing positive, they, they were testing other um, staff as well, and yet PPE gear isn't mandated four days down the track. My mum ends up in hospital when she's tested positive, um, but because she's asymptomatic, we're going to um, um, ship her back to um, St Basil's. What for? Why not keep her in the hospital mm. as I had asked um, and see what, you know, what, what develops? Because um, less than 24 hours after being sent back to St Basil's, we get the call that she's dying. What went wrong? You know, um, they told us that at St Basil's they'd give her the same care and attention that they would in a hospital. Well, you know, my mother's condition deteriorated to the point where when we did take her back to the Northern, the Northern had told us that her kidneys had shut down. It mm. doesn't happen, you know, at a, just overnight. That happened gradually. She was dehydrated. We had to demand that she be given fluids. Um, there's just all sorts of practices there that showed that the St Basil staff weren't um, trained and, and um, were overwhelmed. You had the Aspen people who came in, and at one point, I've got to tell you, I, I was um, happy to, to see that these professionals, you know, were going to come in. Problem was, there's no handover. So what's the point of, um, you know, bringing in the so-called, you know, more professional people when they have no idea who the residents are and what their needs are? And you just end up with a larger disaster than there, what was already happening. There must have um, been um, some pretty some pretty awful communication uh, mishaps as well. I mean, the communication yeah. between families and these services was abhorrent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like we only find out. Um, so they have their first positive uh, on the ninth. Um, we get it on the on the tenth. Um, the, the, the email that that's happened. You know, my mum's. My mum's in the nor in the northern hospital in the COVID ward. She's dying. We get a call from some social worker at St Basil's, um, trying to give us an update and telling us that mum's in her room and they're looking after her. They're no. monitoring her. We had to stop her to tell her, "No, we'll give you the update." Oh my goodness, yeah. that is tough. That that's tough to navigate through, and that's that's pretty hard to explain um, to a, to a family already dealing with a lot of emotion uh, and then eventually grief. I mean, you I mean, you got to say goodbye to her, didn't you? A lot of people aren't. Yes, look, as weird as it sounds, um, bizarre, whatever you want to call it, um, at the Northern Hospital in the emergency um, area while where they were waiting to get a bed for mum, we were allowed in, my sister and I, to go in there dressed up in the PPE gear they had told us that her kidneys had shut down, so we knew what that meant. And we just um, were able to um, hold her hand uh, and say goodbye. Um, I have no words left uh, other than um, to say that I'm deeply, deeply sorry um, for your loss and what you've gone through. Um, and, I, and I wish you all the very best. I know you've got um, your own um, issues within the family with COVID now, yeah. but um, there's a lot on for you. We wish you all the very best and please stay in touch with us, Spiro. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having me. Pleasure.